Hey, this is Jason Burns. I am here with Elizabeth of Elizabeth and the Catapult. Thank you so much for uh, making the time to chat today. I'm happy to be here. You know, first, I'd like to start with first impressions, which is, you know, when the album came to me, it was the title. And it, to me, it felt like you were sort of delivering a letter to us, the audience. And I'm curious if that was the case. And also, if that's true, what's the message that we're supposed to be receiving and listening to the album? Well, there's many messages, so I'm going to try to be succinct. But I think um, the main one was that I wanted this album to feel very intimate. And it's a time capsule of this past year. Mm -hmm. And I wanted it to be as raw and human as possible and and as honest. And I think, and I made the album in my house. Mm -hmm. It's my first self-produced uh, album of many albums that have been studio albums. And so um, I was actually, I read that the origin of sincerely, the word mm -hmm. means is uh, from Roman architects it means unwaxed oh, okay. <laughs> when they would, because they would wax their mistakes and their yep. flaws mm -hmm. in their sculptures. Mm. And I thought that's perfect. It, yeah. is, it is like a letter. I wanted it to feel immediate, mm -hmm. but I also was thinking, yes, this is, this is just an album about being human in a really hard time. And I think that that captures it perfectly. Well, one of the other things that I loved about the album was that it felt like a complete album front to back, something I would have listened to like my dad's vinyl in the 60s or 70s, like his collection. And I'm curious if that was something that you set out to complete, which was a journey through the entire piece. Absolutely. It's we live in an age of singles mm -hmm. and um, I'm going on that ride and it's really cool to see which songs are connecting more or do well better on Spotify or do better on NPR, right. et cetera. But this one, if people have the patience, is 12 snapshots of this larger story. Mm -hmm. And I didn't set out to make a concept album. I just, a lot of it reads like a diary entry mm. of like this convergence of experiences I had with different people and how they were coping with the pandemic this year. Mm -hmm. But the first uh, six months of the pandemic, I didn't write at all. And then when the numbers went down and I was kind of out of my shock, mm -hmm. I just started writing and writing. And this album wrote itself. And I, it's the fastest album I've ever put together wow. about, and it's about this time period. So mm -hmm. it's supposed to be listened it's like it's like a thorough comp yeah it's whatever you call it a thorough uh, a full compositional piece yeah, yeah. So, th so there's also some creative continuity in there for you in terms of a, a sort of progression like emotional progression absolutely mm. and uh i mean it starts with just um these uh, the first song is the birds and the bees and is just kind of stating where we are, where we were when I was starting to process. Mm -hmm. um, and it was this gathering of different conversations I'd had about around people's fears with COVID. Yep. And it's kind of like a PSA too. It's just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> stay at home, keep your mask on. Mm -hmm. um, this is different people's experiences. And by the, by the end, it's like this reckoning with hope, with the song, Hope My Sometimes Friend of like, um, I think that I think that there's, I think I can believe in hope again. Mm. You know, I, can, I think I can believe in the concept again. Well, what's so amazing is that, you know, I, I look at this period right now of artists releasing albums and there are, there's a lot of albums being released right now, which I think Absolutely. is so important for us, the audience, because we need something to, to help us get through and escape and, and just feel a connection where we can't feel connections elsewhere. And I'm curious as a songwriter, is it that same way for you on the other side? If you didn't have this album to create during this time period, would it have been more difficult to sort of process it all? Absolutely. I feel so lucky in the same way that I feel so lucky that I could live stream in this time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I have friends, I have act, I mean, I was gonna be in a Broadway play before this. Mm. So 
I know people that just act or sing or are comedians and they just felt like, I, I don't know who I am. You yeah. know, they like lost their identities. And I feel like, um, I, I think that it's very, it's an obvious, I mean, it seems like a cliche to say my writing is my salve. It really, mm -hmm. it really worked that way this year because yeah. it's, I think that's the way I'm sure that you feel this way with your show, mm -hmm. that it's like, if you can dive into a project, any project, and if you can actually discuss and process through some of the things we're going through with, with multiple people, yep, it's so helpful. Yeah. And there's something to be said too, just about the, the sort of taking your brain off of something else and putting it elsewhere. I know that this year, like places like Home Depot, they had no like wood and stuff in stock because everybody was doing stuff at home. And I don't think it was because they had more time. I think it was because they were distracting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and and so for creative people, you know, we need to dive into music. And again, I go back to there's so much here right now. I'm curious what you in 20 years, as we look back on this time period, how do you think music will help define, you know, this last year or whatever? And, you know, hopefully it's going to be close to a year and not much beyond that. But how do you think the music of now will define now? I think it's like all of the art forms, they're all so necessary. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, it would be my dream if I could like just sit, set this album off into space and have someone find it at some point. <laughs> because like I'm saying, I really do think like all of the music that's being made right now is a very specific time capsule. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that I necessarily did anything original. I think that I just responded to what I had. And I think that I did it in a simple enough way and a heartfelt enough way that it's mm. connecting to some people. Mm -hmm. But and I think there's gonna be so many albums. I mean, I don't even know how many albums there are about, about the pandemic. And I don't, and I think it's like kind of besides the point, it's just that, you know, we, it's not just music. I mean, people are gonna look back on this time and say, I mean, if we can look back on this time, I don't want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to look back and we're going to say, wow, un that's an unbelievable, look at all of, look at, look at the convergence of like Trump and mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter, the mm -hmm. police brutality, the, the um, environment, the, and everything. It's, it's like, it's beyond. Well, and, and you know, there's something about, even if it's, if an album isn't a, specifically about the pandemic. I have been going back to even older albums. And I've been listening to a lot of Jim Croce and I feel like in 10 years, Jim Croce is gonna remind me of this time period just because it's part of me in this time period. Mm, so, I, you know, I wonder if that is going to be, you know, even obviously for you, you wrote this as part of what you were emotionally going through during this time period. But I wonder if it'll be that for other people in a way that is, is not necessarily even tied to the lyrics, just the melodies are gonna remind them of this period because mm. they needed it during during now. It's, it's interesting when you think about, I usually, um, this was a different process for me in making the music in terms of if I was only, what I was thinking about and how mm -hmm. I was, sometimes you make art just for yourself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you make art to connect. And I think that without, really paying too much attention to like anything that has to do with ego, like success or, or, or how people were really going to take it. But just that this was at, like at its core, my way of connecting past a communication breakdown. Mm -hmm. I think that I've been so happy to have people reaching out to me and say, I felt that I had long COVID and I had those obsessive compulsive tendencies with um the with like being per being a perfectly healthy per person mm -hmm. and you know like in pop the placebo with like me talking about the wellness industry or someone saying you know i i also had dreams that i had phones for hands with together alone or someone writing me and saying you know this song about you know being a man and identifying as a woman and coming out to your wife which is uh this rose comes to life like i i'm doing that right now and this song means something to me about mm -hmm. like how how I can embrace my identity and you know that there literally is no better experience than mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. than saying oh I connect wow 
I mean, that's just like the absolute icing on the cake if you can do that. So I'm, this has been like a thrill of a week, really. Well, that way. to be an artist and to see that maybe people connect to a song or an album as a whole in a way that you could never even conceive has to be a wild thing as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I mean, but uh, but these stories, it's like these personal stories that are mm -hmm. really getting me. And, um, and it's funny, I, you know, it, it's also about like what you, I, I'm remembering that um, I go through waves in my life where I go like, oh, what is success, you know, mm -hmm. is success money like I, I go through a lot of different like I, I have like an entrepreneurial like I I've just, I've scored uh 30 films mm -hmm. with uh my film scoring partner and I've you know I worked on Sarah Bareilles's TV show last year and I and then I also you know have this songwriting career and you think like is it about how much of it is about making money and how much of it is about just making something you believe in and, and, and people connecting to it. And you just, I just realize again and again, when people connect that I'm like, yes, this is the, this is the ultimate gift. Mm. This is that, the gift. That's where the true joy comes from for you. True joy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because you mentioned this album was recorded at home, is there something, does it almost feel more personal to you as well? Because you've sort of taken us into your space, not only creative space, but physical space. Absolutely. And I did that uh, intentionally. Hmm. There was nothing like random about that. I, I said, okay, I, I think I, I was given license. I, I listened to this Fiona Apple record that the newest one fetched the bolt cutters. And it really sounds like I know she, I read an interview. I know that she recorded a lot of it or most of it in her house. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was here with my Rhodes and my piano and my guitars. <laughs> And my Mellotron. <laughs> and I and I thought, well, if the songs are good enough and clear enough and focused enough and the arrangements like are are dialed in, then really the best I can do here is just set up a mic, set up a mic, set up a mic, mm -hmm. and make this feel as human as possible. Because mm -hmm. if this feels flawed and if this feels raw and this feels immediate and there's like these live takes of me sitting with the piano on on half of the record then i think that that's the best way to communicate this sincerely e message mm. and so th that's that there was nothing it's funny because it's like a not uncontrolled thing that i was going for but i yeah. but i made the choice to do an uncontrolled mm. thing well and yeah. it makes it it's sort of a time capsule of the times as well because it it is what yeah, what he was dealing with. It's the limitations created opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, so now that the album is complete and you've had some sort of distance between calling rap on it and now, what are you most proud of in retrospect? I think that, um, in terms of like the uh, the the writing or the making of the album, I think, or? I think uh, more from like a production standpoint to being sort of doing it all in your own space and being able to maybe create in a way that you weren't able to before. Yeah, I think that that's very liberating mm -hmm. and empowering. And I think that um, I've, I've been talking to a lot of my friends who are songwriters and and it's funny, I have a fr my friend Adam Minkoff who played Upright um, sent, I did, I had some friends send in some tracks. I, I played a lot of it, but mm -hmm. I had my friend Katie Jacoby send in string tracks and and Adam Inkoff sent an upright bass, bass tracks. Um, but I was listening to his record the other day because he made a 16 song instrumental record, nice. which is blowing my mind. <laughs> and I was and I was thinking about how his arrangements, it was one of the most amazing records I've heard in a long mm. time. And he like put it out on Bandcamp or something. And um, he, and I was just thinking about how, if the arrangements are there and if the song is there, the quality of the song is there. It really, he did everything live mm. and you don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like hearkening back to like, you know, the, the good old days of record making when yeah. people just like set up a mic in a room and, and yep. went for it. And I think that there's, 
because I came from like a major label world where I had, you know, my first two albums, like I went to these crazy studios with like Mike Mogus and Tony Berg and there's all this, you know, mm -hmm. stuff and yeah. it's, and they did, and they're amazing producers and there's all this money behind it. I think that if you come from that, it's harder to just realize that that really at the end of the day, that stuff is amazing and can help and can breathe life into your mm -hmm. music, mm -hmm. but that you can also do it if, if, if you believe in the song enough. And so I tell my friends, like, just set up a mic. What I did is I just did vocal arrangements of everything. And then I replaced my vocal ideas with instruments. Wow. And that's how I did every song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's awesome because it's almost like you mentioned you know, the, the sort of dawn of music and you would just sit and record, which back then it was a sort of singles vibe. People would put out yeah. singles then, but you're now doing that, but putting out the full album, which I, it's sort of combining both worlds. It's fantastic. It's true. <laughs> but, but I mean, just from a sound standpoint, yeah. what I'm yeah. saying is like, I had a mono mic. I mean, when you're listening to the first song on the record, you're not going, this is in, I mean, you can hear that it's in my home because mm -hmm. I have a mono mic sitting on the music stand of the piano just on the bass like not even in the middle I don't even have it on a stand and there's nothing stereo going on and mm -hmm. I'm just singing and I just thought oh god I really like I just think there's something really good about this all right I'm going with it you know like that's it yep. it's like you take yep. the take and you move forward and um and there's something liberating about that well and there's something great that's sort of what I was touching on at the start of our conversation is that and you'd mentioned it's like an intimate setting but it feels almost like a listening party like I feel like yeah. you know, we're in the room with you great that's all I could ask for I'm curious that you know as you as the world opens up and you can get back out on the road and playing live and and sharing this in a way that goes beyond the scope of it do you think it'll be a different experience for you these songs will take on a new life when you're in a room with people that's a fun exploration every time mm -hmm. no matter how you make the album i think fans of mine kind of expect me to um change things up almost too much <laughs> but i'm always kind of exploring I, I get very bored by playing songs in the same way mm -hmm. and um it's a, a blessing and a curse but i think that in general i will always have like 10 ways that I play a song and I and I get so excited to, to play with new people and to uh, share the songs in new ways and to feed off of the audience. And I just can't even imagine playing live right now. It just sounds like such a dream, you know? It's like uncanny. Wow, people are gonna be clapping in real time and like hollering, what a dream. I, I was talking about this with somebody the other day. It's like, you know, the, the bar tabs are probably gonna be ginormous the first couple of weeks that the bars open back up for the live Absolutely. shows it's just gonna people are gonna be you know just forgetting what it's like to experience the real world so there's gonna be so many purses that are been lost <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> well elizabeth thank you so much for making the time today what's the best way for people to connect with you and the new album heading into the the future and hopefully you know being able to see you live again. Getting, uh... That's a great question because I never remember to do my own plugs. Uh, Facebook, <laughs> Elizabeth and the Catapult. Um, I do live streams every Saturday awesome. night. And uh, my Instagram is just at the Catapult. And uh, I guess all digital platforms is are, are where my album is. So Sounds good. Elizabeth, yeah. thank you so much. Thanks for giving us some of your afternoon today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>